Hey, um, Ryan Hayden here. Um, I want to take something, take the time to do something that I haven't done on the blog in a long time, and I want to give you a really useful tech tip. Now, this is for anybody that preaches, um, and uh, it's something that I've done for a long time, and I do it probably a little bit different than most people do it, and there's a lot of benefits to the way that I, that I do this. Um, I'm going to show you a really nifty way to get your sermon notes onto your iPad or your Kindle or your tablet. And the way that we're going to do this is we are going to go from a sermon manuscript to a Kindle ebook. And you might think, an ebook? How, how in the world am I going to do that? I mean, that, that, that sounds really, really complicated. Well, actually, it's really not. It, it's way easier than you think. Now, you might be thinking, why in the world would I make an ebook? Uh, why in the world would I do this? Well, I'm going to give you a couple reasons. Um, the first reason uh, that an ebook is really cool and, and it's really cool to preach from an iPad or from a from a Kindle is there's no paper for you to handle. And so, you know, if if you were a manuscript preacher like I am, and and you uh, went to the pulpit with a manuscript, you might have four or five or six or seven or eight. Uh, pieces of paper to shuffle around and, and they could get uh, all, you know, uh, out of order and whatnot. And it, it just could be a mess. Well, you don't have that problem with an iPad. You don't have that problem with a Kindle. It's just a matter of swiping one way or the other to go back and forth. It, it really, uh, really is beneficial. The second reason is it's, it's, and I've already mentioned this, it's easy to jump around on one of these devices between different parts of your notes. Uh, it's just a matter of swiping or going to the table of contents and uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, another reason is because, because if you make an ebook, and this is different than other ways of getting notes onto a, an iPad or onto a, a Kindle, if you make an ebook, you can actually use your outline as a table of contents. And so you can very easily switch between your manuscript, the paragraphs, and the outline. And so you, if you would rather just, you know, if, if the manuscript's getting in your way and you just want to preach and you just want to look at uh, the outline, all you have to do is hit the table of contents button, which on, on most e-readers is just a button away. And, and so you can go back and forth or, or go back to a, an earlier point or go forward. It really, it's, it's quite cool. Um, another thing is you can easily change the format. I mean, if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can make the, the text as big as you want, or you can make it as small as you want, or you could change the font. Uh, you can do that with an ebook. You can't do that with regular notes. Um, one other reason that ebooks are really cool is you can store them on your iPad. You can store them on your Kindle. They take up almost no space, and you can carry it around and have hundreds and hundreds of your sermons over time um, that you could go back to or use if you're visiting somewhere and they ask you to preach or something like that. And you can see a lot of your work in the finished product right there. And so um, I really think that this is worthwhile. It's something that you should spend your time learning how to do. Now, to do this, obviously, you need some kind of device. So you might uh, use a Kindle. Um, I've got a Kindle Paperwhite. I highly recommend this device. It's tiny. You can keep it in your pocket, um, and I, I really like it. I'll talk about the benefits of that in a second. Or you could use your iPad. Now, I've done both. There are benefits, and there are downsides to both. Um, the reason why I prefer using a Kindle over an iPad is because it's smaller. It's less conspicuous. And also because when you're preaching with an iPad, um, it's very easy if you wear glasses like I do, you'll probably see the reflection of the screen in my glasses, but it's very easy for the iPad to almost be like a, a spotlight underneath your chin or the words to be shining in your glasses. And it can be distract, distracting to people. Also, the kind of screen an iPad has is not as easy to see um, as a Kindle screen. Kindle has what's called a, uh, a paper white screen or an e-ink screen. And you can view it at almost any angle. So you can be standing to the side of the pulpit and reading your notes uh, from the side. And it's, it's really amazing. It's kind of one of those things you have to see to believe. And the Kindle shows no light. There's no light shining up on your face. It's just like looking at a piece of paper, only it's electronic. And so either way, whether you choose to go with a iPad with a Kindle app or uh, uh, some other kind of uh, device with a Kindle app, or, or you decide to go with an actual Kindle, you need to have one of these first. Also, you need to have three programs. No, oh, you need to have three programs. 
Uh, the first thing you need is a plain text editor. Now, every computer comes with some form of plain text editor. On a Mac, you have text edit. Um, on, on, a, on a Windows machine, you have Notepad. Um, and these are that's all you need, so it's free. It's not something you have to go out and buy. You don't have to buy Microsoft Word or some specific product for it. Um, but I do recommend getting a plain text editor that is meant for writers. I use one called IA Writer. Uh, it's only on the Mac. It's not very expensive. I think it was like uh, five bucks or something like that. And it is the most used program on my computer. I mean, it's open all the time. I use it for all kinds of things. I'll show you the benefits of that in a second. But really, all you need is a plain text editor. Uh, the second program you need, also free, is a program called Caliber. And Caliber is an ebook manager. And Caliber will take your manuscript that you've made in a plain text editor and it will turn it into a Kindle formatted ebook or really any kind of ebook. You can make a regular EPUB if you want to use uh, Apple iBooks uh, or, or another format. Um, any kind of ebook format, Caliber will handle and it will organize and, and it, it's free. All right. Um, the third program that you need for this way uh, is an app that Amazon gives away for free. It's called Send to Kindle. Um, it's a pretty neat app. It actually You can actually print to your Kindle uh, from a printing dialog on any program. You can also just drag one of these, these files that we've made onto this Send to Kindle app, send to Kindle app and it will just beam it uh, wirelessly uh, to your Kindle or to the Kindle app on your tablet. Okay, So these are the programs that you need. Let's go back through and I'll, I'll show you how to do this. All right. Now, the first thing that you need is you need to have a manuscript that's written in a plain text editor. And not just any plain text editor, what you need is you need to write it in a format that is called Markdown. Now, what is Markdown? Um, and why should you use it? Well, Markdown is, it's just plain text, okay? It's the simplest possible computer format, just plain text. Uh, so you can write it in anything. Um, but it's a special kind of syntax for plain text that the computer can easily turn into HTML, which is what websites are written in and which is actually the foundation of eBooks as well. And so um, don't let that scare you. It's not all that complicated. It's just a matter of headings and italicized and bold and block quotes and the kind of things that you use in something like Microsoft Word anyways. Um, it's very, very easy to write. This markdown was designed for writers and simply, I mean, honestly, it takes seconds uh, to learn how to use this. Um, I got here, uh, this is an IA writer and I can kind of show, this is a, the manuscript we're, I'm working on right now um, on the golden calf incident. And you just write, um, but the way it works is if you want something to be a heading, um, one uh, number symbol, a space, and then you write, and you have a heading. If you want it to be a second level heading, you start with two number symbols. If I wanted something to be a third level heading, I'd start with three number symbols. Okay. If you want something to be bolded, it's just a matter of putting an, uh, two asterisks on both sides of what you want to be bold. Uh, if you want it to be italicized, you just put one asterisk. If you want it to be a block quote so that it's indented and it looks different, for example, I do this for scripture passages. You just start with a, uh, I think that's a greater than symbol, and uh, and then a space, and it's a, basically that's it. I mean, if you if you picked up on what I just said, you can now write Markdown. It's not difficult at all. It's just plain text with just a few little things that you add uh, to to give meaning and, and, and syntax uh, to to what you're writing. Um, so uh, what is this markdown? Um, we've already said that it's plain text, that computers easily turn it into HTML. It's easy to write. It's easy to read. I mean, it, after you learn it, take the five minutes to learn it. You can look at one of these plain text files, even if it's not in a fancy writer like the one that I was just looking at, and you can tell what it's meant to be. Um, it, it takes up almost no space on your computer. And this is really cool. You could go get like the cheapest flash drive from uh, you know like 10 years ago with like 128 megabytes or something on it and you could get all of the sermons of your entire preaching career I mean three times a week and you could stick them on that one flash drive and carry it around on your keychain 
because this, this takes up no space. It's just a plain text file. It's like the smallest file in the world. Um, one other cool benefit is because it's a plain text file, because it's the simplest format, you can read it on anything. You can read it on your phone. You can read it on a computer. If you could find some way to put it on a computer from the 80s, that computer from the 80s would be able to read it. Uh, it's future-proof. It's past-proof. It's just a really cool way uh, to, to write out your sermons. All right? So you've got this, this manuscript that you've written in Markdown. And you want to turn it into a sermon. Well, you've got to have that program that we mentioned before that's called Caliber. And what you want to do, it's very simple. All you have to do is you have to take your file. You can go into the Finder on a Mac, or you can go into Windows Explorer if you're using a Windows machine. You just take that file, and you literally go to the Finder and, or go to, uh, go to Windows Explorer and drag it in. Now, on, on a Mac, you can do this cool little trick where you just click on the title bar and you can drag the file that way. So that's what I'm going to do. And Caliber will add it to uh, the top of your list here. And so you see here it says the golden calf unknown. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this program. I'm going to hit the convert books button. And uh, it's going to say that the input format is MD. That stands for markdown. That's what you want. And you want to make sure that the output format uh, is MOBI. M-O-B-I. That's what the, the format that a Kindle reads. Okay, you can give it a title, you can give it an author, I'm going to give it Ryan Hayden, the publisher. If you want to do all this, you can give it some tags. Um, okay, you can give it a series if you're preaching through a series. I usually in here, I'll write the text, so this would, one would be Exodus 32. And that's it. You hit OK, you wait a second. It'll show you that it's working on the job, and then down here where it has the formats, it'll be finished. You'll have MD, Markdown, and Mobi. And once you're there, all you got to do is you have to click this click to open button, find the Mobi file in Finder or Windows Explorer, and then drag that file onto your Kindle, Send to Kindle app. Um, that's how you do it on a Mac. Um, I imagine on Windows, all you have to do is open the file and just drop the file there. It'll ask you if you have multiple Kindle devices. I have like 20 of them. It'll ask you where you want to send it. Uh, just pick your Kindle, hit the send button, voila. All right. And now, just a couple seconds later, you'll be able to find that on your Kindle, on your iPad, wherever you sent it. Um, pretty simple. Lots of benefits. Uh, it's a great thing to learn how to do. And I hope that it's helpful uh, to all you preachers out there.